Hey everyone, good morning. It's six o'clock. It's time to rise and shine and rejoice because it is Friday. Woo. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. We have a lot to talk about on this Friday morning, but first things first, let's talk about the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Because Thomas, you have another busy day over there. You're talking about record heat, but mm -hmm. also some smoke in our region too. Yeah, and the hazy skies first arrived on Wednesday morning, and now we're starting to see the air quality start to react to that at least a little bit. As for our current air quality, as we take a look at that map is that most locations are experiencing moderate air quality. Now, typically moderate isn't too bad, especially for our region, and most people won't feel a significant difference, but we're in that pretty high moderate category with the AQI currently at 93. We're very close to the next stage, which is considered unhealthy for sensitive groups where you see the orange and red on that map. That's in Montana. That's out closer towards Missoula and Helena, Montana. But air quality alerts were reissued for the inland northwest and for uh, eastern Washington heading into today since we saw that AQI number jump up a little bit. We're currently at 93. If it gets to 100, then we're in that unhealthy for sensitive group stage. And I think that's our forecast for both today and tomorrow as we experience the, these hot but very much hazy conditions. As you can see, just how hazy it is now about an hour past sunrise over Kirk Coeur d'Alene. Well, right now, wildfires continue to burn across Alberta, Canada, and some of the haze that we've been seeing in our skies is actually due to that smoke coming our way. Yeah, it is getting very hazy, and this morning, a group of local firefighters are heading to Edmonton to help in those wildfires. That group comes from Fire District 9, Spokane, and Spokane Valley Fire Departments. Their goal is to be in Edmonton by tomorrow, where they will get their assigned location. We've been preparing here for our fire season to start in Washington. And being able to help Canada uh, during their time of need is uh, a proud feeling. Uh, there's been many times where we have been uh, short of resources here in the United States and Canada has assisted us many times uh, past years. And uh, this is a year for us to return and uh, help them out in their time of need. Canadian wildland crews have been stretched thin for weeks. Right now, there are at least 50 active wildfires burning near Alberta. Well, hazy skies and wildfire smoke is something that we are pretty familiar with here in the inland northwest, but it does feel like this is earlier than usual. So an air pollution expert from the University of Washington says that an early start to smoke in the skies doesn't necessarily mean a better or a worse wildfire season, but now is the time to start preparing. It's really a wake up call. Be ready. Think about how you're going to provide a clean air space for your family and your home. Get ready with your air purifiers, with your do-it-yourself fan and MRF 13 filters. Poor air quality levels can be dangerous to vulnerable populations such as the elderly, children, and people with heart or lung conditions. While it's not quite summer just yet, it is still a good time to start getting ready for the hotter weather we'll see in the near future. Happening now, an urgent search is underway this morning for a missing two-year-old boy named Rudy Reyes. Police say he was taken by his father. Right now, authorities are searching for a gray 2008 Lexus IS. It has an Idaho license plate and the number is 2CTJ790. Rudy and his father Rodolfo Reyes were last seen in Nampa, Idaho. Police believe they could be headed to Oregon. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. Looking ahead now to Monday, the man suspected of murdering four University of Idaho students will be in court for his arraignment. Now, earlier this week, we learned a secret grand jury indicted Brian Koberger on all charges. So that indictment means he will no longer have a preliminary hearing in June. Monday's arraignment is where he will likely enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. The suspect now faces four first degree murder charges and one count of burglary. His arraignment starts at 9 a.m. on Monday in Leetah County. And of course, Up With Krim will be live from Moscow all morning long ahead of that arraignment. Well, starting today, drivers will have to use a different way to find out information about the roads. The Washington State Department of Transportation is deactivating the 511 service. Up with Krem's Nicole Hernandez joining us now live. So Nicole, this was a helpful service for many people. I actually think I used it once near Snoqualmie Pass, but I've always wondered how often is it used? So let us more let us know more about what's happening and when it's ending. 
Yeah, Tim, so at one point, this service was definitely used very often, but as of today, drivers will no longer be able to call 511 to get road information. And I did talk to the Washington State Transportation Department about why that is, and they said it's really because of the amount of people not using the service anymore. At its peak, there are roughly 2.2 million users a year. That has steadily declined as technology has changed. Uh, more people visiting our app or our website, getting that information in real time. So now we only see about 300,000 users. So like Ryan mentioned there, 501 has definitely been a big tool for our community in the past. It gave information about traffic, crashes, weather, mountain passes, ferries. But Washtar was spending $150,000 a year to keep 511 up and running, so it just wasn't worth it for them anymore. That money will now be able to go back into the budget for other things. Plus, drivers can still get all of that information from the Washtar website or app, from email alerts, from Washtar social medias or radio stations 5.30 a.m. and 16.10 a.m. If you don't have a smartphone or internet, you can also call the Spokane Washdot office at 509-244-5992. I do want to give you a look real quick at this app because like I mentioned, super easy to download and really easy to work as well. This is the main screen where when you open it up, it gives you all the different options for information of all the different things across the state and scrolling at the bottom of the screen there is all of the important alerts for the roads across the state as well. Super easy, intuitive, and gets the same information you would get if you called 511. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Prem 2 News. It is 6.07 right now. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Right now, Washington State Patrol and Spokane Police are searching for a missing indigenous woman who was last seen in East Central. This is 37-year-old Dominique Red Elk. She's not been seen since last Monday. Now, she is 5'7", has black hair and a flower tattoo on her back. If you have any information, please call 911 right away. This morning, we have new information on the arrest of a former North Idaho College professor. Earlier this week, Zachary Schalbetter allegedly dumped soapy water on board trustee Todd Banducci. Court documents show this happened less than an hour after Schalbetter had an exit interview at the college. Schalbetter told officers that he blamed Banducci for his contract not being renewed. During a board meeting earlier this week, President Nick Swain said that Banducci had nothing to do with Schalbetter's contract. Today, Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz is making a stop in Spokane. She's meeting with students at On Track Academy to plant trees and talk about the impacts of orange for urban forestry. Rather. She will then join Spokane County Fire District 4 for the Wildfire Ready Neighbors program. Her visit is set to begin at 1130 this morning. And get ready because this Saturday is the Lilac Festival Torchlight Parade. We want to make sure that you're aware of the expected road closures for tomorrow. So here's a map of the parade route. Several roads will be closed between Washington and Post Street starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Then all of the roads along the parade route will close at 4 p.m. For a full list of Lilac Festival activities and more on those road closures, you can head to our website at crim.com. And that's your Morning Rush. And our other major wet headline weather-wise is how hot it's going to be. And this has been in the forecast all week long despite the thunderstorms from earlier in the week and the wildfire smoke that we're currently tracking for today. No, instead, we are still on track for record breaking temperatures both today and tomorrow. Again, we're seeing low temperatures in the 60s in Spokane. 62 is the coldest we've been all morning so far. And with that sunshine now getting above that haze layer, we will start warming up from here. Looking at a high of about 87 to 88 degrees today in which by the way, our record high stands at 85, so we're forecasting three degrees above the record today.